right, right. See, somebody's got over there. Good to see me, right? Amen. Actually, it's good to see the Norton. It's good to see all you folks, but we're glad you're here, guys. Hey. We're glad you made it. Hey. Um, well, let me, uh, let me get this message because I'm going to get started and get done and get out of here. I want money. I will compromise in a heartbeat for large amounts of cash. <laughs> well, that wasn't it anyway. In fact, I don't know if this is good news or not, but this is all there is. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's, I just wrote it uh, when Brother Vince was preaching, so, uh, so it ought to be uh, uh, short. You can now, look, this is now proof. You can say, it. I saw Gibbs number eight. I always tell people I got seven, but you guys now know I have number eight. Uh, I want you to open your Bibles to John chapter 11. <clears throat> John chapter 11. Always good to be saved, guys. It is so good. I am telling you. John chapter 11. <clears throat> now, I want to say this. I want to make this very clear. <coughs> I have... No complaints or no complaint, even singular, not one, against my God. All right? Um, I don't have a complaint. Uh, there are times, times uh, I won't even talk to you about them. There are just times when I think if I wanted to complain, I'd come up with something. Uh, and there's times when I do that, I'm just as happy as a lark. Just happy as a lark. And I just, I just get with God alone and tell him, I say, look, I've got no complaint against you. I don't have any complaint against the Lord, because there's nothing wrong with him, okay? Now, I, I do say this. Come on, guys. You can't pretend that you agree with him all the time, right? And I give guys a prayer. I tell guys, here's a good prayer to pray. You may, you may need this sometime. It is okay to pray this. Lord, I disagree with what's going on in my life right now. It's okay as long as you finish it with this. But I know I'm the one that's wrong. That's all you got to remember. Because you're not always, well, I just, whatever God says, I agree. Who are you kidding, man? You're on drugs. You're all to get on them, one or the other. I, sometimes, this is the words I've used. These are the words I've used talking to this God. Uh, and, and I say this kind of like, you ever talk to God like this? I just want to talk to you about this right now, if you don't mind. I, 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 am I the only one that prays that way? Okay. I mean, have your jaws ever been tight when you were talking to God? And... Um, and I've said, uh, and that's what I said. I said, I said, Lord, I just want to let you know that I highly disagree with what's going on in my life right now. And then I said this, but don't worry, I know who the idiot is in this picture. Me. I don't have any problem with that, okay? So I have no complaint against God. But be honest, or to be honest, there are some things I don't appreciate about it. Oh, how could you not appreciate somebody who's so wonderful? Oh, come on, come on. Don't you tell me you've never complained about him. Not to him. You have complained about him. And I want you to see this. I want you to see what takes place here in John chapter 11. Uh, we won't read the entire chapter. We're going to leave two verses out. But um, anyway, it starts out here at verse 1. It says, Now a certain man was sick <clears throat> named Lazarus, uh, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. Uh, it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment, wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, uh, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Uh, when, he had, when he had heard therefore, uh, uh, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, saith he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. Now let's skip down to um, oh, verse 18. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. It's not very far uh, at all. Uh, and many of the Jews uh, came to Martha uh, and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she, she heard that Jesus was coming, uh, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha 
unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Now you can, can you say that? I mean, you know, you say, well, I don't like the way you put the inflection. Well, what do you think? She says, oh, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. Come on. I mean, I'm telling you, you know, you get this idea that everybody says, I, well, you think she, that's not what she said? You know, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Yeah. Because they were friends. And, they, and he loved all three of them, and they knew that. And the response that he gave them was not the response that they thought somebody that loved them should have given him. And he's dead. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou uh, wilt ask of God, uh, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Now, now I got to tell you this. This is, this is just a sidebar. This is one of the most exciting things. What is the resurrection? The resurrection is an event when dead people come back to life and go on uh, AMC and have a program. Oh, no, no. Anyway. Uh, but it's, it, is that not what it is? It is an event. Are we not looking forward to a resurrection, correct? That's all wrong. No, no, I just misinformed you. Because look what he says next. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection. The resurrection isn't an event, it's a person. Could you imagine? She's saying, I know there's going to be a resurrection someday. Say, hey, 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 hey. That resurrection you're talking about? Yeah, that's me. I am that resurrection. Well, you want to hang... Could we kind of lock arms here? <laughs> I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and, and believeth in me uh, shall never die. Believest thou this? Now let's skip down again and uh, pick it up about verse, uh, oh, about verse 38. Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. Uh, it was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he had been dead four days. I mean, one thing about Martha, she was plain spoken, was she not? You know, that's not always a virtue for a woman, ladies, okay? You know? I mean, look, you may be plain spoken, but don't brag about it. Well, I just tell them where, yeah, I know. You give them a piece of your mind, you give somebody a piece of your mind, there's none left. Jesus said to her, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldst believe, thou should see the glory of God. Then he took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I know that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot, uh, with grave clothes, uh, and his face was bound uh, about with a napkin, Jesus saith unto him, Loose him, and let him go. And uh, just, just, uh, just to look at the P.S., this is very important, look at the next verse. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. Let's pray. Father, I am going to say this. I'm going to say this, and I am going to speak boldly, for the sake of everybody that is here, we, as a group, have no complaint against you. Now, there are probably some people that if they were honest, they couldn't say they were completely happy with you. They couldn't say that they completely appreciate uh, the way you do take care of things or don't take care of them the way we think you should. But God, there is nothing wrong with you. There is absolutely nothing wrong with you, and you have never, ever been wrong. God, we have, we have thought things out. We have tried to be careful. We have even prayed about things and then, for some reason, just made a bad decision. You have never, ever done that. You, you have never been wrong. And to think that we get to have the God who has never been wrong. Lord, you give us such confidence in you. And Lord, when you and I, I take it back, when I don't agree with you, I know I am always wrong. That is great confidence to me because I don't ever have to think that I could possibly be right in any disagreement I have with you. So God, we come to you tonight. You are right. 
You are right in everything, every action, every little thing that's going on in the life of every person in this room. I don't care uh, whether it's something they're happy about or sad about, whether pleased with or whether they wanted it in their life. We know you're right, and we're just glad you're doing what you want to. Now, Father, please, uh, please get Sam Gipp out of the way of these people. Please deliver this message. Speak to their hearts. God, ultimately, get glory for yourself, because that's what this is all about. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Now, I talk to you about, uh, about the things I don't appreciate about God, okay? And I say, well, well, I don't think you could possibly say that. Well, let's just let's, let's think about this. Uh, you know, I was talking to, uh, uh, to Brother Norton uh, about the problem he had with his trailer, and uh, it was kind of, uh, we, we had a little revelation. Uh, the, the insurance company is not going to cover the damage of his trailer. His trailer's total. They're not going to give him anything for it. You say, what are, that's, well, we call those swindlers. Okay. Uh, about uh, two months ago, three months ago, Kathy was driving the RV. We were towing the truck. Uh, we heard a pop and, uh, and, and looked at each other like, what was that? And, and what we heard, we didn't know at the time, what we heard was the left front tire of the truck blowing because the entire left front suspension went. Uh, bearing seized, uh, froze the wheel, burnt through the tire, burnt through the rim. I mean, it just cut the rim into a D. Uh, it destroyed the axle. Uh, it was a, it was a four-wheel drive, so it destroyed the, uh, the half shaft, you know, the axle, the lower control arm, uh, the brake rotor, the brake caliper. It just destroyed this whole left, left front end. And, um, and so I contacted my insurance company, and they said they're not going to cover it. And then Mick and I found out we both got the same insurance company. Now, I am not going to say anything about National General Car Insurance. <laughs> but if you have it... <laughs> Talk to Mick and I. Anyway, but, um, <clears throat> but what if you had this? What if you had car insurance uh, and, and um, something on your car, you had an accident, whatever the case may be, uh, and, and you had a problem, and you took it in to get it fixed, and however many dollars it was, uh, the insurance company called up and said, no problem, it's been approved, we're paying it. Good. So you go to pick it up, they go, well, look, uh, we haven't gotten a check from the insurance company yet, and if you want your car, you're going to pay for this. You call the insurance company and say, hey, they haven't got the check case. Well, you know, we're having a new check system. You ever get one of those things, you know, where they change banks? Man, I love when a church changes banks right after they give me a check. And, and they go, toing. They go, how come that check bounced? Or we closed the bank account right after we gave it to you. At least that's what they told me. But anyway, um, uh, but they said, look, we'll get it. Look, you just go ahead and pay for it. We'll get you this check. And what if your insurance company gave you every single dime, didn't short you one penny, never argued with you, went along with you completely, but they didn't get the check there for six months? Okay, you would say, my insurance company was, was good to their word, correct? They paid it all, but they could have got the check here a little faster, right? In other words, you'd say, they did everything an insurance company's supposed to do, except I don't appreciate the fact that they didn't get the check there before the car was out of the shop. You understand? All right? There is nothing wrong with God, but there are some things about Him that, let's be honest, us being dirt balls, us being walking, talking uh, pieces of dirt who are on a time schedule. And I don't mean time schedule like I've got this plan for today and I've got to do this in the morning. I mean you're dying. Is that right? You are dying. A good night, man. I mean, I get some of these people, they want to do something. I said, whoa, whoa, I don't plan few, you know, more than five years ahead. I ain't got that anymore, okay? And so uh, we, we, I've, I've gotten down and said this, Lord, I'm dying, just in case he didn't know, because he's going to take care of this in about 25 years. I'm not going to be here in 25 years. Just trying to make sure he remembered that. And so I want you to see some things. Now, wait, let me ask you a question. First off, these girls love their brother? Did they want him alive and with them? Is that what they got in the end? And I'll bet you none of it went the way they thought it should. Right? So what do you tell me? I'm telling you, the first thing is that God never shows up when you think he should. Now, you know, you know most of us when we pray, let's be honest. When you have a crisis of some kind, when you have some kind of a problem... Uh, and you say, I'm asking God to take care of it. No, you're not. No, if you're like me, and you probably are, because we're, like I said, we're just both dirt balls. 
What you're really doing is you know how he should take care of it, right? You think you ought to, and here's what I do. I've said this before. <clears throat> when I have a problem, I, I write down how God ought to take care of it. Now, I know none of you ever did that. You know, if you just gave me the million. Anyway, um, uh, so here's what I do. I write down the script for God to follow. Then I pass it on to him for his approval. I'm not asking him to take care of it. I'm saying, hey, right? Yeah. You've never done that? Yeah, you better have. You better, better believe you have. But, and here's how I think, okay? Tell me if there's faulty thinking here. Number one, does God know everything? Then he must know I'm right. <laughs> I mean, if you're always right, you got to know this is a way to handle this. Right? Come on, haven't you ever done that? Haven't you ever said, you know, this is, I, this is how you ought to take care of this. And here's what God does. does. Here's his part in this. He takes my script. He reads it diligently. And then throws it over his shoulder and goes about doing what he wanted to as though he were God. Guys, am I, am I talking to anybody here that God did take care of something in your life you needed him to take care of, but he didn't show up when you thought he should? Yeah. You know, I don't know if you ever think about the time here. I'm talking about four days. You know, there's a good chance. It says that, that they said, uh, Lazarus is sick and, and the Lord abode two days. But by the time he gets to Bethany, he's been dead four days. He, he could have died. He could have been dead. Just like at, uh, in uh, John chapter four, you know, the nobleman's son, your son's already dead. And, and um, it could be that he died even as he was getting word. Now, if you check it out, uh, look at this. Look at verse, um, chapter 10, verse 40. And he went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized, and there he abode. Uh, I don't know if you realize this, that, that Jesus was not baptized in the Jordan River. If you read John chapter 1, it says he was baptized beyond Jordan. It says John was beyond Jordan, and that's when the Lord showed up. Uh, so he's beyond Jordan, but as near as I can tell, he was in Bethabara. Bethabara uh, is, is pretty much level with Bethany. It's not like way up by Galilee. It's not way down in the Gev. It's pretty close. It might be a really a, a short day's journey, not even a long day's journey. So if he abode two days, if, if, if Lazarus died the moment they informed Jesus of that, and he waited two days, and by the time he gets there, he's been dead He's been dead four days. That means it took the Lord from the time he said, let's go. It took him two days to go a short day's journey. He's not even in a hurry to get there. Not only is he not in a hurry to leave, but he's not in a hurry to get there. Guys, come on. I'm an American. I'm in a hurry to do everything. Aren't you? Yeah, you are. Y'all got some kind of an instant coffee maker that <laughs> just does it. You know, I remember my mom, she made this coffee, you know, the percolator, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, and I used to watch that little clear glass thing, and uh, bloop, 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 oh, anyway, and then somebody came up with instant coffee, and that's good stuff, okay, maybe it's not good stuff for you, but, um, I found that if you just put a pinch between your cheek and gum, it'll do for a cup of coffee. But, but then they made these ones that make it like in four minutes, you got four cups. And that wasn't fast enough. Now we got this thing, it's got a, like a piece of uranium in there. And it nukes a cup of coffee in 30 seconds. And some of you said, well, I'm not in a hurry about it. Well, why you got one of those for your coffee? Because you want it as fast as you can get it. Isn't that right? Come on, are we in the computer age? Okay, I'm going to ask you again. Am I the only one that thinks his computer is too slow? How come this thing is moving at the, at the speed of light and I hit a button and I can eat a sandwich before it does what I want it to do? I can make the sandwich, eat the sandwich, go take a shower, and then the computer says, Oh, did you want that now? No, I wanted it half an hour ago. Because we're Americans and we're in a hurry. Isn't that true? But if somebody's dying... I don't care who you are, now is too, is, is too late. I mean, you want somebody there to help now. Guys, I am telling you, 
God has listened to everything I say. I have no complaint against God. This is not a charge against God. I don't want him to be angry with me for saying this. But he, I have given him some things. I've given him some requests. I have been like, I am hanging on by a rope over a, over a, a precipice. And I said, will you help me? And he went, well, well it's halftime. I, I don't want to miss the game. Haven't, isn't that what you said? <laughs> I want to see how the game ends. You're God. You know who it is. Help me. I mean, God never shows up when you think he should. He goes about doing, he keeps his own schedule, he goes about doing what he wants to. I only want to add this, but he, and you remember this, he is right. Okay? If he has ever moved slower than you thought he should, if he has ever not acted as, is, is reacted as fast as you could, uh, as, as fast as you thought he should, if he didn't move and jump like you said, oh God, here's a problem. He goes, yeah, okay, been there, done that, take care of it. I mean, God does not move as fast as we think he should. He does not act as fast as we think he should. But I want you to know he is not wrong. He is never wrong. He is always right. Now, I'm going to feel awful bad when I'm 75 and he finally gives me that stupid hula hoop I prayed for. But <laughs> he never shows up when you think he should. Uh, second thing, he never fixes it the way you think he should. Come on, what do you think... Why do, why do you think they sent somebody to Jesus? I mean, does he not have a reputation for healing people? Hey, hey, listen, you, go, right, find Jesus. He's somewhere, in the, he's over beyond the Jordan. I, I, I think it's up in Bethabara. Uh, you you got to find him. Tell him, tell him, Lazarus, whom thou lovest, is sick. He, 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 he's going to get over here, and he is going to lay hands on my brother, and he's going to heal him. Because I've seen him do that. I mean, he has taken care of leprosy. He's taken care of blindness. He's taken care of deafness. He's taken care of muteness. He's taken care of the palsy. I mean, he can do this. Just get over there as fast as you can, because Lazarus is not doing well. Is, don't you think that's what everybody thought? No. Come on, guys. Don't you tell me you never had a problem, and you didn't say, this is how God's going to take care of it. Now, Let's, can I speak from experience? I don't think he's ever taken care of it the way I thought he should. I don't think he has ever picked up on a really good suggestion. <laughs> I'm not sure he, he knows a good plan when he sees one. Okay? But really, guys, I mean, you know, you, uh, you oh, I know what's going to happen. So-and-so is going to hear about that. And, and they've got what I need, and God's going to have them give it to me. And then they don't show up. <laughs> well, maybe, you know, I, I like them a lot. And, I think I'll just call them and see how they're doing. I mean, he, he doesn't fix it the way we think he should fix it. Wouldn't, look, if you got somebody that's sick, wouldn't you say, hey, you got a choice. You want them to get well or you want them to be raised from the dead? I'll take get well. I imagine raised from the dead is a bigger miracle. That's okay. We'll settle for get well. Right? I'm not, I'm not, I've, I've seen people get well. I've not seen anybody raised from the dead, so... I'm not got a lot of confidence in that kind of a routine. I'll take the get well part. And they were all expect. Don't you think they were expecting him? What do you think went through those girls' minds when those guys got back there? They said, where, where is he? Hey, did he come with you? No, no, no. He, no, he, you know, he, he said he's going to come. Oh, we had things get ready? Did he start, like, what is, was they camping out there somewhere? Yeah. And, were they breaking camp? Were they, you know, folding everything? Well, actually, no, uh, no, he was talking to the disciples, and, and he listened to what we had to say, and he said, okay, yeah, no problem, and he just went back talking to the disciples, and he's really not far away, it shouldn't, shouldn't take him too long to get here, he'll probably, he'll probably be along, maybe, it's going to take him four or five hours, he'll probably be along, man, I am telling you, you know what, I'll bet you that those two sisters, you know what they did, I mean, for hour after hour, they kept going like this, oh, I wish they had been at wristwatches. Oh, I, invest, I wish they had been to wristwatches. Because they, they kept wondering, where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? At least two more days, he didn't show up. Now, come on, guys. Have you ever come to the point where this is the, this is the deadline? He has got to act by this time, and he still didn't act. Guys, we're talking about a dead line. Lazarus died. That's called a dead line. All right? Let me ask you this. What do you think they thought after he died? Why didn't he come? 
I mean, he's done it for everybody else. He's, done, he's healed people he didn't even know. And he's been in our home, and we fed him. And, and he loves us. We know he loves us. Why did he take care of somebody else, and he didn't take care of us like he takes care of somebody else? Oh, come on, guys. I know you're blessed when God takes care of somebody else, but aren't you a little mad if he takes care of them better than he takes care of you, or quicker, or more evidently? That's true. We don't appreciate that about God. Can I tell you something, though? He's not wrong. He is not wrong. He is not wrong for not moving when you think he should. He is not wrong for not doing it the way you think he should. He never reveals what he's going to do. I mean, isn't that what you figure they thought? Well, you remember, uh, you remember, I think, two cases in point. First Kings chapter 5, uh, you got Nahum. And Nahum goes down there to talk to Elijah. Uh, and he says, uh, he says, oh, man, he'll just uh, he'll whack me in the leprosy. He'll be gone. Did he get rid of his leprosy? Yeah. Did it go the way he thought it should? No. No. And then I think of this. Uh, I think of the three Hebrew children in Daniel. You know what our problem is? We sing about the Hebrew children, and we talk about the God that will be there with you in fire, and we always think God is going to stop us just short of the furnace. He didn't stop them short of the furnace. Isn't that true? He, he never reveals what he's going to do. You know, uh, Doc Ruckman was, was uh, driving across the railroad track down in Pensacola many years ago, and a train hit him. And he said, he told me, he said, as I'm climbing out the window, I'm saying, well, God, if you don't do anything for me, this is a good time. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good time for a miracle. You know, if, you're, if your plane, the engines quit and you start down, you're going to say, we don't have two days. Remember Lazarus. <laughs> We've got about two minutes. Isn't that true? And he never reveals what he's going to do. You know what some of you have tried to do? Some of you try to get promises out of him. You have made some kind of a plan that if he didn't come through, he, he would be embarrassed. And he didn't come through because he's not going to be pushed around, pal. He's not going to be pushed around. He's not going to be collared. He's not going to be herded. He's not going to be cajoled. He's not going to be manipulated. He's not going to be intimidated. Come on. I knew this guy, he had a... He had, he had a uh, had a little girl, and a few years later, his wife and, 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 and he had another little girl, and um, they were expecting another baby, and he wanted a boy. And so he got in front of the church, his church, and he said, I just want to let you know, God made it very plain to me, God's given me a boy. Now, you know what he's trying to do? He's trying to put God on the spot so that if God doesn't give him a boy, God failed him. And he, I got to tell you, he did have just the cutest little girl. Oh, God gave him a boy. But God gave him a boy. He said, look, pal, I'll take care of you. But you, you think you're going to manipulate me? You think you're going to intimidate? You think you're going to give, make me look bad in front of your church because I didn't jump through a hoop that you held up? Right. I mean, are we, we're not talking about a circus performer here. We're not talking about somebody that puts three, three walnut shells and a pee under one of them and goes, can you find it? We're not talking about somebody pulls a rabbit out of your hat. We're talking about somebody can walk on water, bucko. We're talking about somebody can make it rain and for, stop raining for three and a half years or make it rain in 40 days, cover the earth. We're talking about God. And if you think some dirt ball is going to say something that God is going to say, well, I better do that because I'm going to be very embarrassed and they're going to they're say something about me if I don't do what he wants. Are you out of your mind? He never lets us know. I mean, would it be nice if, if he just said, look, I, I'm not going to be there for two days, but when I get there, I'm going to raise your brother from the dead. Wouldn't, wouldn't you at least say, okay, I, 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 I'll, I'll settle for the resurrection. I mean, the problem, whatever you're going through right now, wouldn't you at least feel good if, now, you say, I think God's going to take care of it, and he's not going to take care of it the way you think he should, but wouldn't you feel good if he told you how he was going to right. and said, well, now, give me a week. I've got a little earthquake to take care of over here, and I've got some, 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 a tidal wave over here, and I'm going to buy, buy to your place in a week, and don't worry, I'm going to make it all good. I mean, come on, man, look what Job went through when the whole thing was over. He had twice as much as he ever had. You ought to preach that in Las Vegas. <laughs> I did. Anyway, um. But he never tells us. Does it not bother you that he doesn't tell us? And the ones that he does tell, it wasn't him. That wasn't him glowing in the bedroom. 
I tell guys, I, we live in a, you know, you don't like to live in a trailer. I said, there ain't enough room in a bedroom for three of us. He can come glowing around here. He's going to stand outside and knock on a window. <laughs> I said, you come glowing to my bedroom, you better be bulletproof. <laughs> but he never comforts us in that way. So he doesn't show up when we think he should. He doesn't fix it the way we think he should. And he never even lets us know, okay, I'm not going to do what you want, but I'm going to fix it. When I, when I fix it, it is going to be spectacular. He doesn't even tell us that much. Let me ask you a question. Does he fix it? Yeah, he does. He walks up here and he says, uh, roll that stone away. Did he say, roll the stone away, I'm going to raise him from the dead? No. He didn't even tell him there. They probably thought, what's he going to do, walk in there? Do you know what that's going to be like? You ever walk in a room where dead people were? I had this happen one time. We, uh, we were flying someplace, had a four-hour layover in uh, Atlanta, and, and Kathy's youngest brother was an assistant pastor at that time in the Atlanta area. And he came by to pick us up, and we were going to have lunch together during that four hours. And we're walking out to his car. As we walk out to his car, walk past this big Lincoln Town car. And the, it was down low in the back. And the, the, the right side of it all was, was uh, scraped down to metal. The, the mirror was hanging broken. But it's, it's like right there. And as I walked up, I go, I go, I said, uh, Jeff, I said, there's a dead body in the trunk of this car. He goes, oh, there is not. I said, yes, there is. He said, we better tell the police. I said, you tell the police. <laughs> I, got only, I only got four hours. I'm not missing the flight for this guy. I ain't going to help him anyway. Well, he was sure I did. You know, what do I know? And so we had lunch. We got on a plane. Well, we probably should have talked to the police because two weeks later when they found him, they probably could have identified him. <laughs> yeah, he got killed some gang line slain. They Ran his car off the road, shot him, rolled him up a piece of carpet, threw him in the trunk of that Lincoln Town car, filled it up with sand, and took it to the long-term parking or short-term parking at the airport, and, man, they were gone. How would you like to walk in a room where a body's been dead for four days? And he says, roll away the stone. They thought, why does he want to go in there? Man, has he ever smelled a dead person? You don't want to go in there. He never told him. But, guys, he fixed it, didn't he? So, let me tell you what God does. He fixes it, but not in the way that you expect. Some of you, you are facing something, and, and there's a good chance it's not near as earth-shattering as you think it is right now. But there's something in your life, something that you're looking at, uh, you're seeing it on the horizon, and if God don't take care of this, there's going to be a big-time problem. You ever pray that kind of prayer? I've said those words many times. If you don't take care of this, man, God, we're, we are in trouble. We are headed for the wall. And then he doesn't take care of it, like I think he should, but he does take care of it. I will tell you this, you have the right God tonight, okay? That's all you got to know. All you got to know is you've got the right God. And if you've got the right God, you know how I know he's the right God? Because he doesn't take my orders. Because he doesn't listen to me. Because he's not impressed with my great wisdom. He's not awed by, ooh, look, you, you come up by yourself? He is not impressed with anything about me or you. And what you think is a good idea, he probably chuckles. It, you know, it's kind of like when your kid gave you a, took a, a, a color, color page out of a coloring book and went, <laughs> and went, I colored this for you. That's probably your plan as you pass it on to heaven. <laughs> oh, isn't that cute? <laughs> Look at that. He's, he's way deep in, quick, deep in quicksand. He thinks I'd have somebody come by with a rope. Isn't that cute? <laughs> oh, I'll take care of it. I'll wait till he gets up to his neck. I think his heart will be fervently praying by that time. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Or let me tell you this, he'll take care of it, not the way you expect, and it'll be better than you hoped. Because now that he's dead, what are they hoping for? What are they hoping for? He's just going to be here and mourn and grief and, well, at least we'll have a few days with him. Oh, no. Did they ever think when they walked to the funeral that day that Lazarus is going to walk home with them? Did they? It was better than they hoped for. He takes care of it like no one else can. You know, there's a lot of sick people. Our dear sisters had cancer, and doctors got to her and took care of her. That's not a bad thing. Man, doctors have taken care of me. Doctors saved some of your lives. Isn't that true? So you see, anybody can catch one before they die. But he took care of it the way nobody else can take care of it. He said, heal one? I, I, there are a lot of people who heal them. Let me show you this. Lazarus, come forth. I know some preacher says this. He said Lazarus because if he didn't say Lazarus, everybody dead would have come forth. 
I don't believe that. That's just some cool thing preacher. You think he's the only Lazarus dead in that cemetery? Lazarus, come forth! Boink, 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 boink. Oh, uh, Mary and Martha's sister. I mean, brother. See, guys, get back in there and die. He takes care of it in a way that is historic. You know, if you, uh, I, I don't know, you know, you've, you've had some problems. A lot of them always tend to somehow be financial. How are we going to take care of this? We need the money for that. But, but it's not always financial. But, but I mean, some of the things, the way things were taken care of, it just doesn't, doesn't make much of a story. But you think people didn't talk about that? I was there. I was there. And you should have heard them, the guys that, that came up to Mary and Martha's house, and they were going, yeah, where's the big uh, fisherman? How's he going to fix this now? He didn't show up with them. Those two girls were mad at him. They're going to put him in the next grave. <laughs> oh, well, listen to this. Lazarus come forth. I mean, who talks to a dead person? <laughs> and look at that. I mean, guys, it... You know how historic it was? It's even recorded in the Bible. Wow, you've done something, you get some time in the Bible. So when he does it, he does it as it is historic. And, and look at verse 45 again. Then many of the Jews which came uh, to Mary and had seen th the things which Jesus did believed on him. He does it so he gets glory. That's, that's who's going to get the glory. I think of Gideon, and you know what God says? Oh, man, you got 10,000. Yeah, I got 10,000 people. Boy, God, I'm ready. God says, well, you got way too many. Have them go down there and drink, and once drink like a dog, uh, you, you separate them for the other 10,000. Okay. And I've always thought this. I've always thought, look, Gideon saw them 300 guys over there and go, man, I hate sending these 300 guys packing. But God separated these guys, and I'm going to have to tell them. And God says, okay, now go tell them other guys. Go on home. You're, I'm going to use the 300. Okay, I'll tell the three. No, 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 no. You meant, you meant tell the 300 to go home and, and you're going to use the 9,700 9, guys. No. No, you send the 9,700 home. I'm going to use 300. Lord, I can't get this done with 300. You're absolutely right. But I can. I want this when it's over. I want you to know who won this battle. You know why I'm not going to stop you short of that furnace? Because you'll never know that I'm in there. But, buddy, I'll tell you something, man. When you get in that furnace, we are going to have some, of the, some really good fellowship inside there. And you're going to spend the rest. Can you imagine it? Now, think about being one of those Hebrew children in the fiery furnace. Now you're 70 years old, and you got a grandkid on your knee. What do you think you're going to tell them? Let me tell you what happened. I was about your, your age. I'm telling you, we would, you wouldn't believe what happened. We went into a fire, and the only thing that burned were the ropes on our hands. Our clothes didn't burn. They didn't, even, they didn't even smell like smoke. And we walked around in there with the Son of God. And the Son of God got the glory because even a, a monotheistic pagan said, he didn't, you know what the new version say? The new version say, well, the form of the fourth is like a son of the gods. Oh, no, no. It was like a, the son of God. Because he knew, he knew it. God got that message through to him. And in a new version, they took that message away. You know what he does? He does it so that he gets glory. You know why? I know this. You think he's egotistical? When you're God, you can be. He's the only one that can sing, How great I am, how great I am. You do it, and it's bad. He can do it, and it's right. And it's true. Isn't that true? Now, let me ask you. My, I'm talking to more than one person here. You've had some kind of a crisis. Either you were in it or you saw it coming. You implored God. He didn't jump when you told him to. He didn't come when you thought he should. He didn't tell you what he was going to do. And he didn't handle it like you thought he was going to handle it. But did he take care of it? He did, didn't he? He sure did. Say why? Because you got to remember this one little thing. He is 
God. And that's all you got to know. That's all you got to know. You just got to get a hold of God. I'd like you to stand with your heads bowed. Your heads bowed, your eyes closed. I don't know what your problem is. I don't know how dire it is. I don't know how, what an emergency it is. I don't know how devastating it is. I don't know how heartbreaking it is. I just know that you don't have this many people in the room that they don't have a problem like that. And I'm going to inform you. You need to turn to the God of this book. You need to go to the God of this Bible. Give Him your petition. If you can try, try not to tell Him how to take care of it. Just go to Him. Tell Him, here's what I need. You say, I already knows it. Yeah, but you know what He said? He said, you will ask me and I will answer. He wants you to ask. You say, why? Because He does have an ego. But go to Him and say, look, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I know how I would do it if I were you, and I know you're, you've never done what I thought you were going to do, ever. So if I think this is how it's going to work out, I'm sure that's not how it's going to work out. But I'll tell you what I am going to do. I'm going to trust you. I'm simply going to trust you to take care of this. And that could be one of the greatest things you could do for him. Father, we're just a bunch of dirt balls. We're flesh. I am sorry, God, that we could not only have you as our God, but actually be part of your family. We are actually related to you. And yet we still feel sometimes when we pray that you're not moving fast enough and you're not doing this right. Lord, if anybody should trust you, it should be us. It should be natural for us to just say, we know you'll take care of it. God, you don't do it as fast as we think you should, and you don't do it the way we think you should, and you never let us know how you're going to take care of it. But you never miss. You never miss. You're such, you're such a good God. What I'm asking tonight, God, is people who are at this altar and who need to come here, there are people standing here, God, who they feel like they're standing on the edge of a precipice. They, there are people standing here, they don't feel like they can get through another day or another week unless you show up. And you may not show up for two more weeks. And they will make it. And you will take care of it. And when it's all over, they will still glorify you because you deserve all the glory we can give you. So I ask your mercy and your grace on everybody that is here. I, I implore you, Father, because I am human and because I am dirt and I am dying, I ask you, could you hurry up? I'm saying that for their sake. You don't have to acknowledge that. But we always like when you do it quick and get it over with. Would you please let everybody here know they just all they got to do is trust you and you'll take care of it. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. With your heads bowed and eyes closed as the piano plays, why don't you come down and talk to the Lord? Will you come? Sometimes, some of the hardest words you can say to your Savior is, I will trust you. But guys, didn't you trust Him with your soul? That's the most valuable thing you got. And if you can trust Him with your soul, this little problem you got is no big deal. Will you trust Him? Maybe somebody needs to come down tonight and say this, Lord, I am sorry for some of the things that I have said to you when you displeased me. I talked to you like Martha talked to Jesus. If you'd have been here, I am sorry for my irritation, for my lack of appreciation, for my impatience. Why don't you talk to Him? One last thing. Tell him, you are God. You are always right. You are always right.
people are still at the altar. Let's grab our hymnals. Let's sing this as we close. 155, have thine own way. Altar's still open. Have thine own way. <laughs> 